Love again, you too. This is Adam from Tennessee with my friend Coulter Gray. And this is the room where we work on a lot of the pipes that we order from eBay or from other sources, antique store shopping, um, yard sales, flea markets are a great place. And we buff them, polish them, fix stems, repair the bowls, sometimes use leather dye to restain them if they're you know, nicked or chipped. And today, I received a package from a gentleman from Millington, Tennessee, that I guess, I'm guessing he was getting out of pipe smoking, for what reasons, I don't know. But I made an offer, he accepted, and I bought eight pipes from him. So we're going to go through those and see what he sent me. And it looks like he sent me some extra stuff I didn't expect, which is a good thing. So the first thing right off the bat on top is a box of Solani Silver Flake, which is Red Virginia and Dark Fired Kentucky. It's 100 grams called Blend 660. And from the looks of it, it's full, very full. And that is some very good tobacco. It has great reviews on smoking pipes and pipes and scars. So then, thank you for that. Another bag I didn't expect to get is uh, a mixture of some pipe tools, a check, a pipe stand, and something I'm not familiar with. It's like a little box of Nording Keystone filters for a dry pipe and a cool smoke. Extend the life of your pipe, no tobacco wasted, all natural mineral clay. Is this Nording, made in Denmark. Extra church warden pipe cleaners. Can never have too many pipe cleaners. And the first pipe is a Carl Eric. Beautiful. It's like a freehand, freehand apple. Very nice. Got some neat rustication on the top and a V shape on the bottom of the bowl. The rest of them are actually in pipe socks. These are the only two, it looks like, yeah, these are the only two that are actually in cellophane. Now this is an Eric Nordy. Now leave me a comment if this is supposed to be unfinished this way. It looks as though either he sanded it down or it's an unfinished, kind of like you can get a Savinelli unfinished the Series 3s. Um, it's, a, it's a hefty pipe. I've had some Eric Nordings in, in the past and they're very good smokes, very large. So you can get that bowl real hot and it's not going to torch your hand. Next up, we have a Nording in the bag with his iconic green bags. This is a 2010 made in Denmark Nording. shape. It almost looks like a mini calabash. It does. But a stubby calabash at that. It's got a very nice wide stem and the tenon. The tenon is almost as wide up as the bowl. So the bowl flares at the last, I don't know, inch, inch and a half. It's 
pretty nice. Next up, very different. That is unique. I've never seen an awning like that. Next up, we have a Perinelli. Perinelli is like Italian made, and this looks to be more like an octagon shape. Um, recently had a Savinelli that was called an Octavia that was very similar to this, where it was rusticated or sandblasted every other panel of the bowl and then smooth on the opposite. A little silver band separating the stem and the shank. Tenons tight. It's in great condition. I do not think these things saw very much use. Now this looks to be a leather carrying pouch that's seen a lot of use. Oh nice. Some flints. And all this was actually, all you bought were the pipes. Yeah, all I got was the eight pipes, and that's all he showed in the pictures. I had no idea anything else was coming. I didn't even know it had uh, pipe socks with them. Oh, nice. It's like kind of a military army bit, whatever you want to call it. Not 100%, but this is a. Rigoletto, is that, per, is that correct? A Rigoletto, it's Italian, it's very pretty. It's almost like a half bit Dublin apple mixed together, or egg shape really. Nice wide stem, very hefty. Yeah, it's very dense. Now this one, it's already piqued my interest. This is a Mastro Beraldi, which if I'm not mistaken, that means Master Beraldi. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not positive. But these are made in Italy. And this one, wow, this is gorgeous. This one looks like a tree trunk. You can see the rustication. It looks just like bark, even on the bottom. And it has a gorgeous, gorgeous stem. I don't know if it's picking that up, but it has gold glitter flake. And it looks like there's silver dot on the left side of the stem. Bowl's in great condition. Very deep bowl too. Very deep bowl. That's at least a two inch bowl. Probably a three quarter inch diameter. And if anyone else knows any information, comment below. I would like to know more about yeah, absolutely. this pipe as well. There's a lot of these pipes. The guy must have liked free hands, that's for sure. Which so do you? I do like free hands, yes. Now this one says Stefano Santambogio, Santambogio, but I don't think that's what it is. And unfortunately, I can already tell this one, yeah, it's missing the stem. But what this is, it looks like a flame grain where it goes straight up vertically, 360 degree around the pipe. This is a Savinelli autograph, stamp five. And if that had a stem, that would probably be one I would keep. But the grain on that is absolutely beautiful. It is very large. 
at least a two and a half, two and three quarter inch tall bowl in the front. It's at least a two and a half inch bowl chamber as well and a, almost an inch across in diameter. And this is the last one. This is a Peterson. Comes in the Peterson green bag, Peterson of Dublin. And this pipe, wow. This is a K and P. It's a P lip. P lip is the one that has the hole on the top where the smoke will come out. And that's to help with the tongue bite and that's just to help with the overall flavor of the pipe. Savinelli has a system pipe, is what they call it. Um, Peterson has the P-lip, and so a lot of these really top of the line, very commercialized pipe manufacturers have some sort of design like this. But this one is a K&P Peterson, Peterson System B42. Now, I am familiar with K&P. I've had some K&P Zippos. I've had some regular K&Ps. He's had some KMPs that are the Republic of Ireland, um, so you know they have some age on them. But this one is called a B52, and I did do some looking up on this, and it seems to be a little bit more rare, and it's a fairly large pipe as well. And now I don't know if that's why they call it the B52, but it is a very good size, and it's in very good condition. It's got some, looks to be rustication. I don't think that's sandblast. It could be. I'll have to do some more research on this one. But that is a very nice pipe. A lot of times you'll see these pipes come in with these silver, nickel, or even gold bands with the beveled edge going towards where the stem is inserted into the shank. And they'll be dented from being dropped or grabbed too hard or the ring on your hand. And this one has absolutely no damage whatsoever. It just needs to be polished because, you know, metal gets surface scratches. But there is no damage on this one. No dents, no dings, no I've gouges. I've not owned a KMP that didn't have dings in the silver. You got to screw it. That one you had looked like it had been shot with a BB gun. Yeah, yeah. Every single one. At least the five that I've had. And if you watched my previous video... I am smoking again the little discovery I made this morning. Now I mixed this, like I said, about a week ago, but I didn't know that it would be so delicious. It was more or less of, I got a little bit of Lane 1Q left, I have a medallion left out of the Scudo, I'm gonna mix them up, and it has been amazing. Very, very good. And just a little bit of Lane 1Q, just so you get a little bit of that really aromatic smell just a touch of the flavor, but what you really feel is the hay, the earthiness, and the tang and the citrus from the Escudo. Um, it's a real warm, warm, warm smoke from that hot burning Virginia. So we're gonna get this thing going again. Excuse the weed here. Oh yeah, we live in the neighborhood in the South, and people mow. Uh, pretty much any time. It's uh, about 8 o'clock at night and it's dark, street lights are on, and they're still weed eating. So if you hear a random scream soon, it's because he's weeding at dark, so you probably shouldn't do that. Yeah. Colt, what are you smoking? The mix. The Scudo and Lane? Yes. So I'd say it's a pretty good haul um, for the price I paid. What, what I'm going to do is I might keep one or two, but typically what I do is I look on eBay and places to find deals, and I will alcohol treat the wood, you know, disinfect them. I'll also take the stems. I don't know if you know this trick, but all straight on the wood. The, exactly, not the wood, but just you know, around the bowl in the tenon. Uh, on the stem, inside the stem, inside the shank, just to, you know, to uh, disinfect anything that might be living in there. But we also take the stems, and of course you put a little bit of Vaseline on the actual tenons, 
and you put some Vaseline on the logo so that they don't um, get eaten off or get damaged from the OxyClean. And you soak them in OxyClean for about an hour in hot water uh, with about half a scoop of OxyClean. Of course, it depends on how many stems you have in there. I've had as many as 20, and I've had as few as two. Um, you just kind of have to judge it, and uh, it'll just help break that oxidation up, and it'll make it loose on top. Use a magic cleaner, magic eraser from Mr. Clean. Just scrub it down real nice, and you're good to go. Um, of course, after it dries, you have to sand it. Sand any scratches out, any blemishes, and you just work your way up. I like to do 800 grit to 1500 grit, and then my final application is 3000 grit. After that, just use a buffing wheel with a light, very light red rouge or carrying the wax, same thing we use for the actual bowls. I'm sure everyone's heard and used, you know, caregiver wax in the bowls. And then you're good to go. And I'll be having these uh, posted on eBay probably, today's Tuesday, the 23rd. They'll probably be on, on eBay within two days, maybe up until Saturday. Just depends on how my work week goes um, and how busy I am. Colt also uh, does a lot of his own pipe restorations and... In fact, he's got a whole bag over there he needs to go through. Um, so, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Comment below what your favorite custom homemade blend is. Um, right now, I'm not the biggest vapor fan because they can burn so hot, you really have to go slow. I'm not the biggest aromatic fan. Some are delicious, some are absolutely not at all. Um, everybody has their own palate to each their own, but this was just a random happenstance of me mixing just a little bit of Langman Q with some Scudo, and it has turned out to be quite nice. So, uh, Colton, anything you want to add? Definitely no strangers to blending tobaccos. If you have any blends that you like or do, comment below. We always like new blends. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Again, guys, I'm Adam from Tennessee. This is Colt from Tennessee. And we'll be making videos at least once or twice a week. Um, we're constantly getting new pipes in. We like to show you each one. Um, if you are interested, if you want more information about these pipes, just feel free to message us or comment. And I will get with you as soon as possible. And possibly and, could even do a video of yeah. us doing the full restoration of a pipe. Yes, that, that would be awesome. I think we will do that. Put an overhead camera so you can see every step of the way, um, how we do it. And how you can do it, it's very easy. You find some of grandfather's pipes. You want you to just take the oxidation off, take the dullness out of the wood, clean, you know, ring the bowl, get the old carbon build up out. Um, make your own cake. That way, you know, if you want to dedicate it to like a Latakia or an English blend, if you want to dedicate your pipe to a vapor, or if you want to dedicate it to just a, a whatever, you know, it, it's your choice. But we'll see you again soon. Like I said, I'm Adam. This is Cole. Thanks for watching.